أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إسلام را These are the symbols or verses of the perspicuous book Printed down as an Arabic Quran in order that you may learn wisdom We do relate unto you the most beautiful of stories in that we reveal to you this portion of the Quran Before this you too were among those who knew it not Behold, Joseph said to his father, O my father, I did see eleven stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrate themselves to me. Father, my dear little son, relate not your vision to your brothers, lest they concoct a plot against you, for Satan is to man an avowed enemy. Thus will your Lord choose you and teach you the interpretation of stories and events and perfect his favor to you and to the posterity of Jacob, even as he perfected it to your fathers, Abram and Isaac aforetime. For your Lord is full of knowledge and wisdom. Only in Joseph and his brethren are signs or symbols for seekers after truth. I said, Truly Joseph and his brother are loved more by our father than we, but we are a goodly body. Really, our father is obviously wandering in his mind. Slay you, Joseph, or cast him out to some unknown land, that so the favor of your father may be given to you alone. There will be time enough for you to be righteous after that. Said one of them, Slay not Joseph, but if you must do something, throw him down to the bottom of the well. He will be picked up by some caravan of travelers. Said, O oh, our father, why do you not trust us with Joseph, seeing we are indeed his sincere well-wishers? Send him with us tomorrow to enjoy himself and play, and we shall take every care of him. Jacob said, Really, it saddens me that you should take him away. I fear lest the wolf should devour him while you attend not to him. They said, If the wolf were to devour him while we are so large a party, then should we indeed first have perished ourselves. So they did take him away, and they all agreed to throw him down to the bottom of the well. And we put into his heart this message, Of a surety you shall one day tell them the truth of this their affair, while they know you not. Then they came to their father in the early part of the night, weeping. They said, O oh, our father, we went racing with one another, and left Joseph with our things, and the wolf devoured him. But you will never believe us, even though we tell the truth. He stained his shirt with false blood, he said, Nay, but your minds have made up a tale that may pass with you. For me, patience is most fitting. Against that which you assert, it is Allah alone whose help can be sought. Then there came a caravan of travelers. They sent their water carrier for water, and he let down his bucket into the well. He said, Ah, there, good news, here is a fine young man. So they concealed him as a treasure. But Allah knows well all that they do. They sold him for a miserable price, for a few dirhams counted out. In such low estimation did they hold him. A man in Egypt who bought him said to his wife, Make his stay among us honorable. Maybe he will bring us much good, or we shall adopt him as a son. Thus did we establish Joseph in the land, that we might teach him the interpretation of stories and events. And Allah has full power and control over his affairs, but most among mankind know it not. Joseph attained his full manhood, we gave him power and knowledge. Thus do we reward those who do right. But she, in whose house he was, sought to seduce him from his true self. She fastened the doors and said, Now come, you dear one. He said, Allah forbid. Truly your husband is my Lord. He made my sojourn agreeable. Truly to no good come those who do wrong. And with passion did she desire him, and he would have desired her but that he saw the evidence of his Lord. Thus did we order that we might turn away from him all evil and shameful deeds, for he was one of our servants, sincere and purified. Then they both raced each other to the door, and she tore his shirt from the back. They both found her Lord near the door. She said, What is the fitting punishment for one who formed an evil design against your wife, but prison or a grievous chastisement? said, It was she that sought to seduce me from my true self. And one of her household saw this and bore witness. Thus, if it be that his shirt is rent from the front, then is her tale true, and he is a liar. 
But if it be that his shirt is torn from the back, then is she the liar, and he is telling the truth. When he saw his shirt, that it was torn at the back, her husband said, Behold, it is a snare of you women, truly mighty is your snare. Joseph passed this over, a wife, ask forgiveness for your sin, for truly you have been at fault. Ladies said in the city, the wife of the great Aziz is seeking to seduce her slave from his true self. Truly has he inspired her with violent love. We see she is evidently going astray. She heard of their malicious talk. She sent for them and prepared a banquet for them. She gave each of them a knife, and she said to Joseph, Come out before them. When they saw him, they did extol him, and in their amazement cut their hands. They said, Allah preserve us. No mortal is this. This is none other than a noble angel. He said, There before you is the man about whom you did blame me. I did seek to seduce him from his true self, but he did firmly save himself guiltless. And now, if he does not my bidding, he shall certainly be cast into prison, and, what is more, be of the company of the vilest. He said, O oh my Lord, the prison is more to my liking than that to which they invite me. Unless you turn away their snare from me, I should, in my youthful folly, feel inclined towards them and join the ranks of the ignorant. So his Lord hearkened to him in his prayer, and turned away from him their snare. Verily he hears and knows all things. Then it occurred to the men, after they had seen the signs, that it was best to imprison him for a time. Now with him there came into the prison two young men. Said one of them, I see myself in a dream, pressing wine. Said the other, I see myself in a dream, carrying bread on my head, and birds are eating thereof. Tell us, they said, the truth and meaning thereof, for we see you are one that does good to all. He said, Before any food comes in due course to feed either of you, I will surely reveal to you the truth and meaning of this, ere it befall you. That is part of the duty which my Lord has taught me. I have, I assure you, abandoned the ways of a people that believe not in Allah, and that even deny the hereafter. I follow the ways of my fathers, Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, and never could we attribute any partners whatever to Allah. That comes of the grace of Allah to us and to mankind, yet most men are not grateful. O oh, my two companions of the prison, I ask you, are many lords differing among themselves better, or Allah the one, supreme and irresistible? Not him you worship nothing but names which you have named, you and your fathers, for which Allah has sent down no authority. The command is for none but Allah. He has commanded that you worship none but him, that is the right religion, but most men understand not. My two companions of the prison, as to one of you, he will pour out the wine for his Lord to drink. As for the other, he will hang from the cross and the birds will eat from off his head. So has been decreed that matter whereof you two do inquire. And of the two, to that one whom he considered about to be saved, he said, Mention me to your Lord. But Satan made him forget to mention him to his Lord, and Joseph lingered in prison a few more years. The king of Egypt said, I do see in a vision seven fat kine, whom seven lean ones devour, and seven green ears of corn, and seven others withered. O you chiefs, expound to me my vision, if it be that you can interpret visions. He said, A confused medley of dreams, and we are not skilled in the interpretation of dreams. But the man who had been released, one of the two who had been in prison, and who now bethought him after so long a space of time, said, I will tell you the truth of its interpretation. Send you me, therefore. Joseph, he said, a man of truth, expound to us the dream of seven fat kine whom seven lean ones devour, and of seven green ears of corn and seven others withered, that I may return to the people, and that they may understand. Joseph said, for seven years shall you diligently sow, as is your wont, and the harvest that you reap, you shall leave them in the air, except a little of which you shall eat. Then will come after that period seven dreadful years, which will devour what you shall have laid by in advance for them, all except a little which you shall have specially guarded. Then will come after that period a year, in which the people will have abundant water, and in which they will press wine and oil. The king said, Bring you him unto me. 
But when the messenger came to him, Joseph said, Go you back to your Lord and ask him, What is the state of mind of the ladies who cut their hands? For my Lord is certainly well aware of their snare. The king said to the ladies, What was your affair when you did seek to seduce Joseph from his true self? The lady said, Allah preserve us, no evil know we against him. Said the Aziz's wife, Now is the truth manifest to all. It was I who sought to seduce him from his true self. He is indeed of those who are ever true and virtuous. This say I in order that he may know that I have never been false to him in his absence, and that Allah will never guide the snare of the false ones. Nor do I absolve my own self of blame. The human soul is certainly prone to evil, unless my Lord do bestow his mercy, but surely my Lord is oft forgiving, most merciful. So the king said, Bring him unto me. I will take him specially to serve about my own person. Therefore, when he had spoken to him, he said, Be assured this day, you are before our own presence, with rank firmly established, and fidelity fully proved. Joseph said, Set me over the storehouses of the land. I will indeed guard them as one that knows their importance. Thus did we give established power to Joseph in the land, to take possession therein as, when, or where he pleased. We bestow of our mercy on whom we please, and we suffer not to be lost, the reward of those who do good. But verily the reward of the hereafter is the best, for those who believe and are constant in righteousness. Then came Joseph's brethren. They entered his presence, and he knew them, but they knew him not. When he had furnished them forth with provisions suitable for them, he said, Bring unto me a brother you have, of the same father as yourselves, but a different mother. See you not that I pay out full measure, and that I do provide the best hospitality. Now if you bring him not to me, you shall have no measure of corn from me, nor shall he even come near me. They said, We shall certainly seek to get our wish about him from his father. Indeed, we shall do it. And Joseph told his servants to put their stock in trade, with which they have bartered, into their saddlebags, so they should know it only when they returned to their people, in order that they might come back. When they returned to their father, they said, O our father, no more measure of grain shall we get unless we take our brother. So send our brother with us, that we may get our measure, and we will indeed take every care of him. Said, Shall I trust you with him with any result other than when I trusted you with his brother aforetime? But Allah is the best to take care of him, and he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. Then when they opened their baggage, they found their stock in trade had been returned to them. They said, O oh, our father, what more can we desire? This, our stock in trade, has been returned to us. So we shall get more food for our family. We shall take care of our brother and add at the same time a full camel's load of grain to our provisions. This is but a small quantity. He said, Never will I send him with you until you swear a solemn oath to me, in Allah's name, that you will be sure to bring him back to me, unless you are yourselves hemmed in and made powerless. And when they had sworn their solemn oath, he said, Over all that we say, be Allah the witness and guardian. Further he said, O my sons, enter not all by one gate. Enter you by different gates. Not that I can profit you aught against Allah with my advice. None can command except Allah. On him do I put my trust, and let all that trust put their trust on him. They entered in the manner their father had enjoined. It did not profit them in the least against the plan of Allah. It was but a necessity of Jacob's soul, which he discharged. For he was by our instruction full of knowledge and experience. But most men know not. Now when they came into Joseph's presence, he received his full brother to stay with him. He said to him, Behold, I am your own brother, so grieve not at aught of their doings. Then, when he had furnished them forth with provisions, suitable for them, he put the drinking cup into his brother's saddlebag, then shouted out a crier, O you in the caravan, behold, you are thieves without doubt. He said, turning towards them, What is it that you miss? But we miss the great beaker of the king, for him who produces it is the reward of a camel load. I will be bound by it. The brother said, By Allah, well you know that we came not to make mischief in the land, and we are no thieves. The Egyptian said, What then shall be the penalty of this if you are proved to have lied? They said, 
the penalty should be that he in whose saddlebag it is found should be held as bondman to atone for the crime. Thus it is we punish the wrongdoers. So he began the search with their baggage, before he came to the baggage of his brother. At length he brought it out of his brother's baggage. Thus did we plan for Joseph. He could not take his brother by the law of the king, except that Allah willed it so. We raised to degrees of wisdom whom we please, but over all endued with knowledge is one, the all-knowing. They said, If he steals, there was a brother of his who did steal before him. But these things did Joseph keep locked in his heart, revealing not the secrets to them. He simply said to himself, You are the worse situated, and Allah knows best the truth of what you assert. He said, O oh, exalted one, behold, he has a father aged and venerable, who will grieve for him. So take one of us in his place, for we see that you are gracious in doing good. He said, Allah forbid that we take other than him with whom we found our property. Indeed, if we did so, we should be acting wrongfully. Now when they saw no hope of his yielding, they held a conference in private. The leader among them said, Know you not that your father did take an oath from you in Allah's name, and how before this you did fail in your duty with Joseph? Therefore, I will not leave this land until my father permits me, or Allah commands me, and he is the best to command. You back to your father and say, O oh, our father, behold, your son committed theft. We bear witness only to what we know, and we could not well guard against the unseen. Ask at the town where we have been, and the caravan in which we returned, and you will find we are indeed telling the truth. Jacob said, Nay, but you have yourselves contrived a story good enough for you, so patience is most fitting for me. Maybe Allah will bring them back all to me in the end, for he is indeed full of knowledge and wisdom. And he turned away from them and said, How great is my grief for Joseph! And his eyes became white with sorrow, and he fell into silent melancholy. He said, By Allah, never will you cease to remember Joseph until you reach the last extremity of illness or until you die. He said, I only complain of my distraction and anguish to Allah, and I know from Allah that which you know not. So my sons, go you and inquire about Joseph and his brother, and never give up hope of Allah's soothing mercy. Truly no one despairs of Allah's soothing mercy, except those who have no faith. Then when they came back into Joseph's presence, they said, O exalted one, distress has seized us and our family. We have now brought but scanty capital. So pay us full measure, we pray you, and treat it as charity to us, for Allah does reward the charitable. Did know you how you dealt with Joseph, and his brother not knowing what you were doing? They said, Are you indeed Joseph? He said, I am Joseph, and this is my brother. Allah has indeed been gracious to us all. Behold, he that is righteous and patient, Never will Allah suffer the reward to be lost of those who do right. They said, By Allah, indeed has Allah preferred you above us, and we certainly have been guilty of sin. They said, This day let no reproach be cast on you. Allah will forgive you, and he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. With this my shirt, and cast it over the face of my father, he will come to see clearly. Then come you here to me together with all your family. When the caravan left Egypt, their father said, I do indeed scent the presence of Joseph. Nay, think me not a dotard. They said, By Allah, truly you are in your old wandering mind. Then when the bearer of the good news came, he cast the shirt over his face, and he forthwith regained clear sight. He said, Did I not say to you, I know from Allah that which you know not? They said, O oh, our father, ask for us forgiveness for our sins for we were truly at fault. He said, Soon will I ask my Lord for forgiveness for you, for he is indeed oft forgiving, most merciful. And when they entered the presence of Joseph, he provided a home for his parents with himself, and said, Enter you Egypt all in safety, if it please Allah. And he raised his parents high on the throne of dignity, and they fell down in prostration all before him. He said, O oh, my father, this is the fulfillment of my vision of old. Allah has made it come true. He was indeed good to me when he took me out of prison and brought you all here out of the desert, even after Satan had sown enmity between me and my brothers. 
Verily, my Lord understands best the mysteries of all that he plans to do, for verily, he is full of knowledge and wisdom. My Lord, you have indeed bestowed on me some power, and taught me something of the interpretation of dreams and events. O you, creator of the heavens and the earth, you are my protector in this world and in the hereafter. Take you, my soul, at death as one submitting to your will as a Muslim, and unite me with the righteous. Such is one of the stories of what happened unseen, which we reveal by inspiration unto you. Nor were you present with them when they concerted their plans together in the process of weaving their plots. But no faith will the greater part of mankind have, however ardently you do desire it. And no reward do you ask of them for this. It is no less than a message for all creatures. How many signs in the heavens and the earth do they pass by, yet they turn their faces away from them? Most of them believe not in Allah without associating others as partners with Him. They then feel secure from the coming against them of the covering veil of the wrath of Allah, or of the coming against them of the final hour, all of a sudden while they perceive not. You, this is my way. I do invite unto Allah, on evidence clear as the seeing with one's eyes, I and whoever follows me, glory to Allah, and never will I join gods with Allah. Nor did we send before you as messengers any but men whom we did inspire, men living in human habitations. Do they not travel through the earth and see what was the end of those before them? But the home of the hereafter is best for those who do right. Will you not then understand? Despite will be granted until when the messengers give up hope of their people and come to think that they were treated as liars, there reaches them our help, and those whom we will are delivered into safety, but never will be warded off our punishment from those who are in sin. There is, in their stories, instruction for men endued with understanding. It is not a tale invented, but a confirmation of what went before it a detailed exposition of all things, and a guide and a mercy to any such as believe.